We've been working on a large open source Ferrofluid display that we finished in November. We are currently working on improving our design. And the first step in that improvement is to improve the electronics drive it circuitry. And therefore, we got these three prototypes from Oshpark, which gave them to us for free because they love open source project and we are an open source project. This should be exactly what we need. Let's just assemble them and see if they work. Welcome to Applied Procrastination. There are several reasons why we need to replace our old PCBs. First of all, we need to optimize the form factor just to make it easier to connect all the electromagnets and making the display smaller. But secondly, we also need to make the software more effective and one way to do that is to help it out with some new dedicated hardware. In a previous video, we had to optimize our code 45,000% just to make the display work at all. But with these new PCBs, we can offload a lot of that computational load to application-specific ICs that we didn't have before, which will make it much easier for us to be creative with the code. All in all, we believe that this is gonna be a huge reliability upgrade that's gonna open up a ton of new possibilities for us, such as developing games to play on the display. A lot has happened since last time. Unfortunately though, due to the coronavirus situation, we haven't had anywhere to film, or anywhere to be for that matter, so most of it's undocumented, but we have been working behind the scenes and we've soldered up these boards and we've tested them, and guess what? They don't work. So it turns out I made some big blunders when designing these PCBs. For example, this IC isn't even connected to power. That's obviously not going to work. We still wanted to test out the concept that this IC could supply this IC with enough current to actually turn on the magnets. In order to do that, we went to Bodge Town. We connected some loose wires and got everything in the state that we wanted. Well, almost everything. We fired them up again and this time they actually turned on the magnets like they were supposed to. So we redesigned the boards. We basically put all these bodges inside the board instead, and we ordered new ones. Ta-da, they're already here. Let us solder these up, fire them up, and see if they work. And let's do it on camera this time. Board number one is all soldered up and ready to go. Let's drop it in there and see if it works. I want to connect some wires as well. So the board is now connected to the top row of electromagnets and that row is above the ferrofluid container unfortunately so we're gonna have to test it with something made of iron and see if that's attracted or not. We programmed the board so that it should turn on every other magnet. Let's plug it in and see if it works. This is just artifacts because we're not uh, initializing the shift registers right now. Come on. Oh, 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 yeah, it's on. Yes, that's on. Off, good, on. Okay, they're on, but they're weak. Why are they so weak? So now we plug the board in to power this row just above the ferrofluid and we programmed it so it should turn on every other pixel. Let's see if it works. Oh god, I hope this works. Please. Please. The fuck? Uh, hmm? Did you see anything? Is that it? What the? Let's try to reprogram this and see what happens if we just power up one magnet, if, if that helps. Okay, let's see. Upload. See anything? Jesus Christ, there's absolutely no activity at all. Do you have any ideas? Um, I tried uploading a new sketch that sweeps through the entire row. Well, I mean, we saw some small bumps on the previous run, didn't we, did we? Are we, are we sure that we actually counted uh, right? 
that we're not using the counted right. Yeah, so we're not using the row that's just behind the ferrofluid. That we're actually using that, that the we're row. using this row instead of the one above. Yeah, are we completely sure? I mean, no. Yeah. <laughs> of course not. Okay, let's try that. Move your ass here in front of the oh, camera. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll try to do that. And so many cables back here. Okay, let's try that. <gasps> <Are we>? Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> oh man! Oh. So <laughs> it's a complete miscount. Jesus. So we can't we can't count to three to three. I can't even say three. <laughs> One, two, <laughs> two. <laughs> Jesus. Oh man. Well it works! How stupid is that? Mm. It works. Um, <laughs> we just need to move it up a row. And work on our counting. Okay, last thing today, firing up some waves to see that everything works. What's this? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Oh. Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that! Okay, that's cool. I, I've done something like this before, but this time it's actually on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, this simplifies everything. It's so much better! This solution is so much better than the previous one. Oh. Okay, I want to fade in now. Yeah, I agree. So that was one PCB that took about what? Two Five? days? Oh, two days, yeah. <laughs> two days. <laughs> two full days. And now we only have uh, 11 left. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. R2 PCBs and the electronics on board were provided by Ideas, which is today's sponsor. Ideas is an electronics company based in Oslo, Norway, and they're specialized in radiation detection and imaging. Their products are present in some of the absolute roughest environments possible considering radiation. For example, on Earth they're present at CERN, and in space they're at the International Space Station, and they're soon going to the radiation belts of Jupiter. That's pretty sick. I personally worked at Ideas, so I know it's a very inclusive workplace with people from all around the world. Check them out at ideas.no if you would like to learn more about them. But now let's get back to the project. We have all these fully assembled PCBs that needs to be wired up and fired up so we can do a full integration test and see that everything works as expected. Boy, that's a lot of wires. <laughs> Hopefully we've done it correctly and we're done with all the boring stuff. So in order to test that the PCBs work, we've made this animation. It'll draw up some ferrofluid from the bottom, basically using all the electromagnets. So it's a big stress test of that. And then it'll display the word new. We're not too sure about how it will look because the ferrofluid is getting old. So don't expect too much from that. It may not look super good, but Considering that this is a test of the PCBs, um, we don't really care too much about the visuals. We just want to see that it lifts up ferrofluid and displays something that almost looks like new. So <clears throat> let's get this uh, converted to the fetch format and upload it. Okay, this is the big one. You ready for this? <laughs> yes. Power on. And. Uh, Away we go! No, we don't. What? Why? Oh. It says it's playing. 
Well, that's a lie. After even more debugging, we found a couple of major errors that we needed to fix. First, a couple of broken wires, that's a quick fix. We also found a couple of broken PCBs and that's a bigger problem because we don't have any spare PCBs. So we had to repurpose from other places in the display. Finally, we noticed that our I2C bus wasn't behaving properly. So we had to increase the pull-up strength by reducing the pull-up resistance and now it finally works. <laughs> These new PCBs are such a huge upgrade over the previous ones and not only are they a much better form factor to actually fit inside this box and uh, along the grid of the electromagnets, they're also so much easier to program. And if you've ever checked out our open source code on GitHub, you'll know that it used to be a mess. But now it's much cleaner and that's mainly due to the capabilities brought in by these PCBs. It's just so much easier to get an overview and uh, communicate with them because now we can communicate over I2C and they will do PWM modulation themselves instead of doing that in software like we used to. So just today I've been able to crank out a few new features like fading in dying, uh, fading out dying pixels and fading in waking pixels, which, well, it would have taken me much longer if I were to use the old, old system. So I'm looking forward to improving the feature set of fetch and just making it a more capable machine. And these new PSBs are gonna be a huge part of that. And as I've already mentioned, this entire design is open source. You'll find all the CAD and code on GitHub. So head on over to github.com slash applied procrastination if you wanna check that out. And as always, a huge thank you for everyone joining us to watch this project and uh, watching the video until the end. Also want to give a special shout out to Vintegatan who gave us a shout out on uh, his much larger YouTube channel and welcome all the new followers that came from him. So um, thank you all and thank you for watching and we'll see you next time and until then, happy procrastinating. So now that we only have the hardcore crew left watching, uh, I want to take a few moments to just explain why this video has taken so long to get out. And well, mainly it's due to COVID-19. Um, the restrictions in Oslo has been fairly strict and we, um, both me and Amin, have full-time jobs now after finishing university, which means that we have to show up physically at the office every day and we don't want to mix those groups and potentially spreading the virus across uh, from one to the other if, uh, if it spreads uh, in either workplace. So uh, that's one reason and well, as I said, we finished university, so we, we don't have access to those labs anymore. So we've had to work from home and there's been a lot of moving. Both of us has moved a couple of times since, uh, since our last video. So um, this is my new apartment and it's uh, a little bit larger than my previous one. So now I finally have <laughs> enough space to actually do some hobby work. And maybe that means we'll get out a few more videos uh, soon and maybe it doesn't, uh, who knows, it's really hard to tell, but we will at least do our best to continue making videos and we have a lot of good projects uh, lined up, but it's just hard to find the time and space and well, to navigate all the restrictions. So um, we wanna be responsible and just take it slow. So we'll see how it goes, but as mentioned, we seriously appreciate you watching and we hope you may want to subscribe and maybe even uh, support us on Patreon in the future. We haven't got that set up yet, but if that's something you would consider, maybe write us a comment down in the comment section and tell us that you would consider helping us. Anyway, um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.